the most important question is not whether you can figure out the Trinity. It's whether the Trinity is true. Mm -hmm. And how do you know it's true? Well, if God is real and he's revealed himself, Sorry, we where? now need to see where he has revealed himself and then take him at his word. And I believe that's the Holy Bible. God's hey. perfect words, perfectly preserved. Hey, man, we out here. And there Scriptures. in this book, that's the word of God. I am told the one Scriptures. God is a father with his eternal son and his eternal spirit. And the one God cannot be other than the Father mm -mm. with his eternal Son and his eternal Spirit. What's going on, everybody? This is your boy, Albert, man. I'm coming at y'all with another Sam Shamoon reaction. So we already reacted to the first one about Sam Shamoon showing the Trinity in the Old Testament. Then he showed it in the New Testament. So now he's just, I believe, just describing what the Trinity is for people who may not be able to comprehend it. So let's get into it. Let's buy a wonder How, if God is one, he can be three persons? Houseway. Yes. Yeah. Well, my first question for you, if you're thinking logically and thinking rationally, and again, logic and rationality can take you only so far. Revelation has to take you the rest of the way, meaning you have to open up that heart. No matter how much you meditate on creation, mm -hmm. you will come to a conclusion there's a God, but you, you won't know in. who that God is and what he's exactly like. So if there is a God, if there is, and we both believe there is, he in his love and mercy, yeah. if he created, he didn't create it to be hidden. He created it. Third video that I'm reacting to Sam Shamoon. And again, I don't see how anybody can say that the Trinity is not littered throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. I mean, littered might be an exaggeration, but many different parts um, in different scriptures. So again, we have to remember that the different scriptures that it's in is by different authors, depending on, again, what scripture, because there's a lot of it that talks about, you know, in Genesis. So obviously Moses is the author of that. But different scriptures, not Old Testament, New Testament that just show uh, the distinct persons. Um, and some would say, oh man, what about the new, Te or excuse me, Old Testament? They don't really talk about the Holy Spirit or yada, yada. Yeah, no, they show the distinctions in, in both Old and New Testament. I just believe that in the New Testament, there's more so just more emphasis on Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Whereas in the Old Testament, um, you know, Jesus hasn't been revealed yet, but we still know him to be multiple persons in the new Old Testament as well. So to be known by his creatures, because we believe he created out of love. So to make himself known. And what I mean by that is Yahweh obviously raining down uh, brimstone and fire from Yahweh from above. So, and that's Genesis. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly where it's at, but it's in Genesis. Trust me. So God would then, in his love, need to reveal who he is, mm -hmm. what he's like. So when we talk about the Trinity, the Trinity is something that God has revealed about himself. Where people get everywhere tripped up is because there's nothing in creation that's identical to the Trinity. It doesn't make sense to them how, if you're one being, you can be more than one person. But now let's question that. So I, if he means like truly identical to like identical twins type thing, even though identical twins still have like some differences, then I get it. But if he's just talking about like having similarities, no, I think there's, you know, I think that's why we understand or why even when we have revelation that we can understand the Trinity because um, there's aspects of us and just aspects of our language that would show that. Um, like, for example, the only type of like, this is like the only word I can remember because I watch and listen to a bunch of different uh, Christian apologetics on TikTok thing and obviously Sam Shimon on YouTube. But uh, and they talk about Ihad. Uh, I'm sorry if I butchered that. You know, I'm not the greatest at speaking other languages, barely even my own. Uh, so, but Ihad, if I'm not mistaken, is a uh, plural unity so basically you know obviously two becoming one um and one ihad being plural so you know i think that's kind of even though it's not fully identical but still gives us some sort of understanding if you believe god is beyond comprehension and unlike anything in creation <clears throat> would it surprise you and shock you that god's mode of existence the way he exists is completely anything completely like anything in creation and there being nothing to me identical to it and so that the way he exists would transcend our ability to fully understand yes that makes sense so that that's number honest. one the trinity is unlike anything in creation <clears throat> there's nothing identical to the trinity and we're not able to fully comprehend it which should be expected okay, if we're dealing with an infinite mind a being that's beyond comparison who exists in a completely different way than the way creatures do so the fact that you have a struggle with the Trinity, that doesn't mean it's not true because you X. sound like a very intelligent man. And I'm not to be honest, I don't know where y'all get like where like oneness people or modeless get the understanding or the idea 
that God is, you know, one where, again, it shows Father, Son, Holy Spirit in the New Testament. It shows the distinct when it comes from Yahweh and Yahweh in the different parts of the Old Testament. That, to me, is dang near kind of like atheism, where it takes a lot of faith to really believe in that. Um, and, you know, no disrespect to anybody, but it doesn't make sense really when you actually look and again i'm not saying i'm the most because uh, i'm not i'm not a scholar by any means i'm literally just now starting to get into really get into the depth and the crooks and the crannies of you know the bible and what it's talking about but even i kind of understand with the lack of knowledge i have about you know the distinctions and how you got to reach like mr fantastic to get to some of these conclusions that these people got I'm saying that to patronize patronize you you know that even in creation even among scientists there are things within creation, as limited and temporal it is, mm -hmm. that they know are realities, but they don't understand how. Mm. They see yeah, it, but they don't comprehend it. But that doesn't mean they deny the reality of what they're seeing, right? right? That is true. That's uh, nope. For example, I'm a, a auto technician, and some of these guys, people you uh, watch uh, say this and that, Shoot, man, we can't even understand where our own, like, we don't understand the depths of our own ocean. I'm just going to randomly throw out a number. Like, we don't even know, like, 92% of our ocean. We haven't even been able to study that and kind of understand that, let alone the universe. So what makes us think that we're going to be able to understand anything outside of that? You still got to get a different understanding. So that makes sense. So, so that's number one. Just because you can't figure out the Trinity... That doesn't mean it's not true because mm. if god is infinite then expect that god will be beyond your ability to truly comprehend his infinitude but secondly when we say god is one even when we say god is one that needs to be defined one what because mm. people say one god like the muslims will tell you ahad ahad or wahid wahid okay one what for example mm, i can speak of one family but a family consists of more than one person Oh yeah, real quick. I just um so when he was talking about like being able to comprehend and understand, I watched this video by this fellow named Rob Bell. Uh, I might not necessarily agree with all his, you know, doctrine and things of that nature or his beliefs, but in this particular video called Everything is Spiritual, he talked about like the science of fine tuning and some other stuff. So he basically talked about a whole bunch of different things of how we can kind of understand that there's a creator. But in his uh, lecture, he talked about uh 2D land or flat land, excuse me, is what he referenced. So flat land is basically like a 2D uh, imaginary place, I guess you can say, or if it was, you know, a 2D place, how would they be able to perceive a 3D being and or 3D object? In the lecture was that if he was to pass a ring through 2D or flat land, that it wouldn't come as a ring because again, they don't have anything 3D, so they wouldn't be able to comprehend what it is. So it would come at different times and different lines and points. And then uh, as it passes through, um, the people in Flatland wouldn't necessarily have a grasp or understanding unless there was somebody who kind of had a revelation, much like Sam was talking about in the beginning of the video of, you know, what this could be, where some people, much like atheists or other non-believers, um, would say that, you know, oh, man, that's just line, 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 point. Whereas, you know, people who believe and have the understanding and relationship with God understand like, no, that's God or quote unquote in this analogy, excuse me, uh, it's the ring. So. We got to understand that a being outside of our space time, uh, we can't necessarily fully grasp, even though he is allowing us to get uh, uh, understanding of himself and who he is through the scriptures. Person, right? Yes. I can speak of one nation, but a nation hmm. consists of millions of people. A whole right? bunch. Yes. So even when I say one, one what? <clears throat> what do you mean by one? You mean one numerically so that two comes after one? No. Do you mean one in, in his essence, one in his being? Hmm. He's one community. I think so. so that in itself doesn't tell me yeah. what one it means essence, for God to being, be one. One God? That's the second thing. But That's three. the second thing. For, for example, <clears throat> I'm going to give you analogies that are not identical to God, but analogies from creation. You're in your car, yeah. right? Yes. Okay. That's one car, right? Yes. How many doors? Hmm. Four doors. How many wheels? I ain't going front, Sam. I ain't going front. If I was like, you know, a hater, if I was a Muslim, by the way, I'm not a Muslim. All you haters out there like, oh, man, lights can't do with a beard. No mustache. I just can't grow mustache. If I could, promise you I would. But y'all need to stop judging your boy. I'm not Muslim. But anyway, so I think if I was like an enemy, I would say this and use this. Like, it seems like you're like making God parts when you use this type of analogy. Again, He, I know he said that, you know, he's not necessarily using um, analogies to kind of like fully identify. But this kind of sounds like partialism to me when you talk about like car parts, because, again, whether, you know, it's just 
what he's referring to are just parts of the car. Like you wouldn't say, oh man, that car door is still the car. You would just say that's a door to the car. But when it comes to God, you know, God being three distinct persons, uh, you know, I think it's a bit different. Does it have opinion. an engine, transmission, and so on? Don't come at me, yes. Sam. But that's confusing. I thought you said it's one car. How can one car have four doors, four, four? <laughs> Yo, Sam be cussing people out. Hopefully, you don't see that part of this video. Hopefully, he doesn't see this video because I want him cussing me out because he would probably tear your boy up. Tires and an engine and a trunk. You see, you get the point, right? Yeah, all the components make mm -hmm. up the one. You got it. So uh -huh. for me to know what it means for God to be uh -huh. one, he has to explain it to me. He has to explain to me what it means for him to be one. Mm, amen. To add to that point, the only reason why you think there's a problem with one being being more than one person is because that's your frame of reference. That's your experience in right. the temporal finite creation. In the temporal finite creation, if you're one being, you're one person. But how do you know that if you go to a higher level of existence, that you can't be one being and more than one person? How would you know that? It's kind of like the flatland thing. I wouldn't know that until I reached that point. That's my point. So if God comprehend. tells you I exist, and I exist <laughs> unlike anything creation, and my being is not limited the way your being is, that it's limited mm -hmm. to a single person, right? <clears throat> then yeah. this is how I exist. My existence transcends your existence. It's not multiple gods, but this one God is the Father in union with his eternal word, the Son, and eternal spirit. <clears throat> and that's Three the one God. So the one God cannot be other than the Father and his eternal word, his Son, and his eternal spirit. Can't be. That's what makes the one God the one. Hey, yo, real quick, dude, I got to just say this again. If you made up to this point in the video, I appreciate it. If you're new, go ahead and like, subscribe, because I'm going to drop more uh, reaction videos to not only Sam Shamoon, but some other apologetics, other Christian-related topics, and music, and things of that nature. So go ahead. And also, if you made up to this point, let your boy know you made up to this point by letting me know who is your favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Whoops. Who is your favorite? I got Raphael. Let me know in the comments. One God. So this is just who he is. So... Beyond that, I don't know what more I can add to help you because the problem people face is because from their frame of reference, because mm -hmm. we're not God, we don't have an infinite mind, we don't see the way God sees, we're creatures bound to time, Let space, Kanye and place, and we're bound in a world that is finite, limited, and temporal, so we only assess by what we see and experience. And in mm -hmm. my experience, every being is a single person which is also not completely true. Have you ever looked at Siamese twins? Yeah. So even in among hmm. finite temporal created things, you do have beings that are multi-personal, multi but we see that as a deformity hmm. because yeah. we know it's not normal see, hold on. for a human. Hold on now, see Sam. See, like the like the car thing. I, you know, if I was, if I was, if I was an enemy, you know, I'd be thinking the same thing. Like, yo, you calling God deformed? What's up with that? I know you not. I, again, I know you not. But it sounds like when you you know, let Geno Jennings hear that. He'd be like, that's not Bible. You got to talk about the Bible. My bad for the horrible Geno Jennings impersonation. But don't let the enemies be hearing that. I know you can back it up, Sam. I know you can back up what you're saying. But, you know, this, well, I might be tripping too. I might just be thinking way too much into it. Human being to be more than one person. So when you see Sammy twins, we know that's a deformity. But still, nonetheless... There you have two persons attached to one body. Yeah. Right? But that's a deformity, obviously, because God did not design human beings to be multi-personal and that one being is more than one. Human beings? Human beings. I thought it was human. My bad. A person. In fact, if you have a person that's multi-personal, we call that a disease. That's schizophrenia. Because you can have, and the psyche. You want these people out there, like Modeless, that be talking about sons talking to himself, and that, you know, when he's getting baptized, that, you know, he's getting baptized, but he's hearing himself talk to himself, and then he's seeing himself come down as a dove. All that don't make no sense. But I attempted so very hard. I jumped on so many oneness apologetics uh, 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 TikToks to just ask them questions and ask questions because again i'm super new in this uh again i have my base off trinitarianism um and i believe that that's the truth but i tried because i wanted to learn more about everything and i tried and tried and tried and no matter what they told me about that never made sense and maybe it's the same for them but 
The difference is there's still the distinctions in what the Trinity believes and not what they believe. He of a human being where he's, human. he has multiple personalities and one personality is not aware of the other. That is a fact, but that's schizophrenia. But that too mm -hmm. is a deformed, that's a defect, right? Yes. So is that clear? Yeah, it make perfect sense to me. Now makes I sense have to me. a better understanding. But now let me give you a final example from scripture, even from finite temporal things, the creation yes. of man. Get to the scripture. Not that God is identical to physical beings because he, he's not a physical being. He's not bound to time, space, and place. And nope. we don't say there's a male and female in the Godhead. So we don't have God the Father nope. and God is the mother, right? Yeah. Mm -mm. But in creation, God said, let us make Adam in our image after our likeness. He said. But it. then it says, Adam is them. Let them have dominion over the world. I'm, just, I'm summing up the passage. So here he says, I create Adam. This Adam, he is in my image. But then he says, this Adam is them. And Genesis 127 tells us that Adam is male and female. The male and the female together are the one Adam. And in Genesis 5 verse 2, Genesis 5 verse 2, it says, in the day he created them, male and female. And the day that he created them, male mm -hmm. and female, he called them and named them Adam. Hmm. So the male is called Adam. The female, his wife, is called Adam. Hmm. And then in Genesis 2, 24, it says, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and the Amen. two shall become one flesh. Basar Achad. Ah, okay, now, you said it. I said it earlier. Achad. I didn't say it the right way. Eve, the female, has her own flesh body. She's mm -hmm. a distinct physical being. Oh, another person. The male Adam, her husband, has his own physical body. He's a mm -hmm. distinct physical being, All but it the says person. the two are one. So here you can have two distinct physical beings, physical persons, still being one. How much more God, who's not limited the way we are. Mm. Sam spitting. Sam be spitting, y'all. Yep. So now what the problem, what problem could we have in saying? Well, Sam, well, Sam say what the problem is? Hold on, Sam. Go ahead. No, he just showed yo, he a thug for He said, What the problem is, what it is. Well, what's up? I don't know. I can't figure out the Trinity. So, what you can't figure it out? There's a lot of things you can't figure out in creation, but you don't deny yes. their reality. The most important question is not whether you can figure out the Trinity, it's whether the Trinity is true. Mm -hmm. And how do you know it's true? Well, if God is real and He's revealed Himself, Sorry, we where? now need to see where He has revealed Himself. And then take him at his word. And I believe that's the Holy Bible. God's hey. perfect words, perfectly preserved. Hey, man, we out here. And there scriptures. in this book, that's the word of God. I am told the one scriptures. God is a father with his eternal son and his eternal spirit. And the one God cannot be other than the father mm -mm. with his eternal son and his eternal spirit. Now, what I'm about to read now is Genesis 11:7, 7, and this is where God is about to tear down the Tower of Babel. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they will have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Verse 7, come, let us go down and there confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So, again, this is the Old Testament. This is God, uh, the Lord. And he says, Come, let us go down. Who's the us? Does God need angels to come help him go down and do that? No. But he said, come, let us. Who's the us? This next one is Isaiah 6, verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go before us? Again, now I'm just going to read the particular verses, but uh, there's going to be in the picture somewhere around here. There's going to be more of the verses up top and below. But I encourage you not to just have me read these, but to actually go and study and read them for yourself for the verses entirety. Read the entire book of Isaiah so you get a better context of what it's talking about. But again, it says in Isaiah chap chapter six, verse eight. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Who's the us? being referenced. So, so now we're about to get into New Testament. This is 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. One more time. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you all. Amen. This, again, distinctions. 
I believe for oneness people, if it was just, you know, Jesus, why wouldn't Jesus just say Jesus? Why is there the distinction of the three? Regardless, if you feel like, oh, man, but his spirit is still omnipresent. I've heard that before. And the last one from the New Testament I'm going to give you guys is John chapter 14, verses 12 through 18. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works than he will do because I go to my father and whatever you ask in my name that I will do that the father may be glorified in the son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot see because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells within you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. That is John 14, 12 through 18. It says, and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper. And he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells in you. Excuse me. And he will be in you. And obviously Jesus is the one who's speaking at this point. So appreciate you guys for watching up at this point. Love you guys. Catch you guys next time.